Hi, everybody. Welcome to season two of the Gamut Network. And I really thought through when I wanted to have the guest that's on today. And I couldn't think of a better time than to launch our second season of the Gamut Network because he is that special, that amazing, and I am so honored to now call him my friend. With that, I'd love to introduce Eric LeGrand to the show. Hi, Eric. Hey, Mindy, how are you? So good to see you as always. Uh, great to see you as well. And for those of you that I'm sure are out there that have followed Eric throughout his whole career, you will see that he has a new do, a new look that I'm really into. I love it. It's so perfect. <laughs> it's got to change it up, right, Eric? You can't always keep just, it safe. I had to switch it up a little bit. I had the dreadlocks for about 11, 11 and a half years, and it was just like, all right, it's time for a change. I, I love it. To the, the I love it. So let's um, get into kind of the beginning of the kind of chapter two of Eric LeGrand. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your career um, as a football star and where that has taken you? Yeah, so, you know, as a football player, I started off playing Pop Warner football when I was five years old and got a huge adrenaline rush from being able to score a touchdown and said, you know, this is this is a sport for me. Got to high school, got offered uh, as a true fresh as a freshman a scholarship to go play at a Division One college, which was Rutgers University. And then from there that I had my brother in law, Adam Shire, who's now a coach there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our family, baby. But um yeah, I got offered a scholarship to Rutgers as a freshman. You know, I committed my junior year, but had a you know stellar high school career. Got to go on to college, got to play as a true freshman, and then in the middle of my junior year, I was running down the field to make a tackle, and yep, I had a spinal cord injury. And that was in 2010. That was October 16, 2010. Okay, got it. And so then, take us a little bit about. You know, we've had many guests on the show, some that were born with their disability, some that the disability happened during their lifetime, which obviously you fall into that category. Walk me through a little bit of when you realized that you your life was going to be different. Were you in the hospital? Were you back home? You know, it was definitely at the hospital in the beginning. I didn't know if I was going to die on the football field or I was going to live. But then they, you know, they cart me off the field. You know, I'm thinking it's just maybe just a full body stinger. And I knocked the wind out of myself. My body would just come back to normal soon. I'll be all right. Then you get to the hospital, you know, you're just so highly medicated from the, from the surgery and whatnot. And, you know, you don't really remember the very beginning, beginning. But then when you wake up a few, you know, a few days later and things start to, you know, become normal again. And you start, you know, looking around and realizing that. You know, my life has definitely changed. You know, I can't feel this, can't feel that, I can't move this, can't move that, and all these different tubes coming out of you. I kind of realize, you know, life is going to be different for me going forward. So it's definitely when I was in that hospital. And you were, what, let me just think for a second, 19? I had just turned 20 the month before. 20. Okay, you just turned 20. So probably the whole trajectory of your life changed in a second. Um what what was life like a bit when you had to return home and you had a whole new normal? I can imagine that it was, I actually can't imagine, let me say that, what what that transformation must have been like for you. Well, the transformation honestly happened during my hospital stay for three and a half weeks. Then when I got over to Kessler Institute in uh, West Orange, New Jersey, where I was at. Yes, I know months. it well. Mm -hmm. five months for inpatient rehab and there were, I, it was just opened up a whole other world to me because I'm not gonna lie to you when I was at Rutgers I was in my own little bubble mm -hmm. that I didn't know I didn't know there was an outside world my life was you know study hall class weight room sessions practice you know that was it you know a little tiny bit of a social life that's all I knew I had no idea about the world that was going hot outside yeah until I got to Kessler and you start to meet people that have similar injuries to you and what what they were doing with their life beforehand. And I was like, oh, wow, that was actually going on. But then, you know, you kind of adjust to your life over the next five months. And then going home now, leaving a facility after you had all that help, is a little bit scary because now you're going home and this year, uh, we were actually moving now to Jackson, New Jersey with my aunt at the time. And um, 
yeah, you know, I was like, all right, now the nurses are gone. It's just my mom and family, and then the nurses are going to come in and take care of me. But yeah, a lot of this stuff is going to be relied on your family now and the nurses that you provided by right, your home health service. Mm-hmm. And how about mentally? What what mentally did you have to overcome, or was there a moment that you said, you know what, Eric, this is this is the new me. I I gotta move forward. I gotta get involved in my new life. Talk me through that moment. Honestly, this is where being an athlete, you know, played such a huge role for me in my life. Well, you know, those moments when I was, you know, going through those tough times or you know, having to adjust, I'm like, you know what, Eric? This is just like anything else. You're going to have to work to get back to where you want to go. And football, we only get 12. In college, you only get 12 opportunities to play a game. Mm. All those other days, grinding, working, pushing hard, working hard. I said, you know what? I'm going to have to take that same mentality once I realize kind of what happened to me. I wasn't going to be playing football anymore, but I'm like, I want to still be able to live a life, you know? God willing, you to live for many, many more years from 20 years old. So I said to myself, I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to be upset. I don't want people to see me down. And all these people that are reaching out to me, I'm like, how can I let them down now? And then it's like, all right, Eric, grind mode, put it, put it in your head. It's about, it's, it's time to work. And that's what I do. It's, I mean, I, I, I am so always amazed by the, that perspective because there's plenty of able-bodied people out there that could really use a bit of that dose of medicine in terms of grinding and just realizing this is one life you have to live. You have a choice. You either do the best you can or you put your head in the sand and it's not going to be that great of a life. And, and you, it seems like that you immediately, or as soon as you're, you were mentally there, took a path of grinding. And I, I think that people out there watching and, and somebody that maybe is where you were October 16, 2010, and their life changed is going to look at you and say, yeah, I can grind. I can do that. Absolutely. And people, you know, like you said, able-bodied or somebody with a disability. You know, there's so many times people ask me, like, how do you get the strength and the courage to keep on pushing each and every day? And I just say, like, I do not want to be upset. I'm not, I don't I don't work well when I'm upset. I'm not good. And there's just so much more to live for, so much more to do. We have to stop putting restrictions and restraints on our life and actually go out there and find a way to do Surround yourself with the people that can help you get to certain things that you want to do in your life done. And if not, then you learn from, you learn from opportunities. You learn from, you know, mistakes that happen along the way. But, hey, wake up every day, be appreciative for the things that you have and live your best life. Yeah, love it. Amen. So, and actually speaking about all the, the things that, that you um, have done or people that you've worked with, just give us a, a, just some overview of, because there's so many amazing things that you've done, but I, I think I want people to know like the, the depth of it. Yeah, no, no. I usually don't like to, you know, brag about myself, but yeah. No, this, I will. I'll so, brag about that's it. Really, that, that's <laughs> some really cool stuff I've got to do, you know. Like if it was launching my foundation to help find a cure for paralysis, or graduating college and being a commencement speaker, all the way to writing, you know, writing a book, winning the Jimmy V. S. B. Award, um, starting a show Mission Possible, you know, to bring out other people with disabilities and give them experience of a lifetime with one like Dwayne The Rock Johnson and people like the Triple H. Tell us a little more WWE. about the show. I think that would be yeah. really interesting. Tell us a little bit more yeah. about the show. So Mission Possible, we started in 2016. It was, we had one season on Fox Sports, and then we we're going to be able to do more. But um, yeah, we were able to go with people to some sort of, has some sort of disability. You know, whether it was one arm golfer with Tommy Morrissey, or we, we got, I took a girl to prom, and Michael Strahan gave me a suit for that. And also... <laughs> There was another. There was another one where we got to go down to uh, to uh, Miami with uh, Jeremy Thomas, who was a wheelchair uh, basketball player who was born with spina bifida, and we got to share their stories, but also give them a cool experience by bringing him out to the Ballers premiere, which mm-hmm. was the Rock Show, and we got to meet Dwayne and Rock Johnson, and you know they get to see special moments. You know Tommy Morrissey. I was on the phone with Justin Thomas, who's now one of the best golfers in the world, and we were talking a little bit about Tommy. You know, just hearing stuff like that, getting them to have these experiences, 
be able to film it and be able to have a platform to put it. I thought it was just amazing. And, you know, we want to tie a sponsor behind, but we want to keep on doing it. Because yeah. not everyone has the same platform that I have. So with my platform, I want to use it to share other people's stories that are fighting, fighting adversity every single day of their life. Absolutely. And, and, and similar to what we're trying to do with this show is we are also highlighting that people with disabilities are people first and have amazing mm -hmm. stories and, and have offered so much to the world and offering so much more to come. And I think that's, you know, kind of rebranding who people with disabilities are. And I think Mission, uh, mission Possible. Is that right? not Mission yeah. Impossible? Mission yeah. Possible. Mission Possible. Um, does just that. And and I think it also, from the other side, probably gives perspective to these athletes that have met, you know, people with disabilities and have a, a different perspective. So I think it's it's such an important um, statement that the show is making. Um, and I also mm -hmm. didn't want to miss out on talking a little bit more about your um, foundation and, and what you do with that. So tell our, our audience a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's actually a funny story. So Team LeGrand, we started in uh, fall of 2013. And the Christopher and Dana Reed found this is a fun, it's a fun reason branch off the Christopher and Dana Reed found this. From day one, they were with me, supporting me, and, you know, behind, they had my back, educating me. They were just there for anything that we needed, my family and I and everyone else around the situation from the beginning. So in 2012, as time went along into my life and my journey, so, so many people like, Eric, how can we help? What can we do? Like, what, what do we need to do? I'm like, you know, mom, maybe it's time to start a foundation. You know, let's start a form of foundation. I'm like, you know, those Christopher and Dana Reeve people, they've always been reaching out to me. But mom, I, got, I kind of got a question. I'm like, who's Christopher Reeve? <laughs> and my mom looks at me. She goes, are you kidding me? You don't know who Christopher <laughs> Reeve is? I feel the it's original, We're very the, old. It's the original Superman in the 70s and 80s and blah, blah, blah. Man. Hey, mom, you know I was born in 1990, right? <laughs> and she and she was like, yo, my God. So then I went and did my research on him, and I was like, oh, probably should know who that is. And, yeah, um, he's major. And, exactly. So then after I did my research and found out what they were about, I'm like, this is the perfect team, to, you know, foundation to partner with. And I'm proud to say that since our inception in uh, 2013, we are closing in on raising $2 million for spinal cord injury research, which is truly amazing. Really cool. It's extraordinary, and I'm sure you are not stopping. Knowing you, you are not stopping. So that is unbelievable. I have a, a, a question I want to kind of dig into a little bit. If you had to say one thing that you feel um, is an attribute, or one of the many things that's an attribute to Eric post uh, the tackle, and the next stage of your life. What what do you think it would be? What have you, you know, developed based on now having a disability and and forming a, a the next chapter of your life? What would that be? I would say two things actually. One is patience. I still don't have too much, but I've gotten a lot better. <laughs> I used to be every I need to everything right now, right now, right now. Instant gratification. I need it right now. To now realize, you know, take it a step back and realize, all right, some things take a little bit of time, let it yeah. develop, let it marinate a little bit, but also awareness. Mm. I'm just so more, since we're aware of just people's situations, their life, their attitudes, how they go about their life. And I'm more like, like, why is that? Like, I'm always going to the why is that person like that? So, you know, someone has a bad attitude and they get all except me. I'm not like, you know, the person that's just like, all right, just leave that person alone. I was like, Hmm, what's their background like? Like, where yeah. did they come from? How were they raised? Like, there's a reason why that person is acting like that. And, you know, I don't, I'm don't. i not quick to judge it, you know, anymore. Just like, all right, there's something that's, they, you know, that obviously made that person the way that they mm -hmm. are. So, you know, there's a background to it that I don't know about. So, may not associate with them, but I know that there's a reason why they're like that. So, making me more aware of just people with disabilities as well and making and knowing that having a conversation with people and stuff you know, staying away from them, just being more aware of all that. Yeah. I, I really feel very similar to that in terms of the awareness. I mean, until Oliver came into our life, I really admittedly didn't even know what muscular dystrophy was, let alone mm -hmm. my kid having it. So, it, you know, I am incredibly grateful and thankful that he opened up this entire 
new world to me that I get to meet people like you and call you my friend is, is just extraordinary. And I feel that my life is richer for it. Um, and it sounds like you do as well. Yeah, I do. I do nothing about a spinal cord injury. I, I read the word paralysis on the back of my helmet where it was a warning sign, but it went in one ear and right out the other. So yeah, no yeah. idea about this life before my injury. Agreed. So if people uh, want to get in touch with you um, or follow you on social media, what is the best way to connect with you? Yes, yeah, so on social you get my social media on Instagram. And Twitter is at Eric Legrand 52. That's E R I C L E G R A N D 52. My Facebook is just at Eric Legrand, or you can go to my website, ericlegrand52.com, and keep up with all the things I'm doing in this world. Or, or business opportunities will be coming you know, soon. So, just a lot of cool things that I'm excited for in the future that, you know, just going to keep on putting out this, po this positivity to the world. Love it. And we can't wait to, to watch it. So before we go, I'd like to ask all of my guests one final question, um, and that's about the power of a vision board or manifesting things in your life that you um, believe that you are going to make happen, um, that you have hopes, dreams, wishes about. I'm curious, and I'm sure everybody else out there is curious, if we got to look onto Eric's vision board, what would we see? Probably you ever see when you look at a vision board where it has all these different equations, like a scientific equation oh, yeah? jumbled up like that? Yeah. That is Eric LeGrand's physical <laughs> board. And at the bottom right corner is the final answer. Oh my God. That is my like vision a full board. algorithm. Like a full like algorithm written yeah. all across the board, right? Up, jumbled up and you're like, what? And then you get to the bottom and then it's like, oh, okay, that's the answer. That is an Eric LeGrand vision board. I'm glad you're asking me that because no one actually did it. I just thought about it in my head. I'm like, yes. that's me. That is I love me. It. Well, guess what? We can't wait to follow the algorithm and see where it winds up because I have no doubt that it's going to be game changing, mm -hmm. world changing because that's you. That, I love the perspective of that because people may not know or where it started or how you got there, but there was a journey along that process. and. What you see you know, from at the bottom is what I manifest out of it. I love it. And that's so perfectly you. Excellent answer. Eric, awesome. thank you so much for being on the show. I always love talking to you and seeing you. And I can't wait to watch what you do next. I appreciate it. And just know that you're part of our family now as Rutgers, guys. You're that's part right. of us. <laughs> that's right. I will be. I'm, and I'm a good, loyal fan. That's what I'm talking about. We, yeah. we need those, I know, especially the I tough know. times. I, I promise. Well, I'll be there. Love it. Love it. Thank you. If you would like to be on the Gamut Network, please email us at talent at gamutmanagement.com to tell us why you'd be a great guest. Please also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Gamut Network, as well as follow us on social media at Gamut Management. Thank you again.